In this video, we're going to be discussing one of the special tests used in the assessment of thoracic outlet syndrome, and that is the costoclavicular test, also known as the military brace test, or Eden's test. To perform the costoclavicular test, the patient's going to be positioned and standing, as you see right here, and like many of the other thoracic outlet syndrome special tests, the PT is going to be palpating and monitoring the strength of the patient's radial pulse throughout the duration of the test. So obviously the first step is to accurately find the radial pulse, and once you have it, make sure you maintain that throughout the duration of the test. Once you're accurately assessing the radial pulse, you're going to depress and pull back the patient's shoulder, really the scapula, help maintain it more in a position of depression and retraction. And once you have that, you're going to move the shoulder into extension with the elbow straight. So kind of holding the scapula down, pulling it a little bit back, and then putting the shoulder into a little bit of extension with the elbow straight. You can also see here that the patient's beginning to drive their chest forward or outward. If they don't automatically do that, you can instruct the patient to drive their chest outward in an exaggerated fashion, almost like they're trying to imitate Superman. So the patient's going to then drive their chest outward. And you're going to hold this position for up to 30 seconds. So what constitutes a positive costoclavicular test? Well, let's think about the radial pulse first. Number one, if the radial pulse completely disappears in this test position you see here, or if at the very least it decreases in strength or vigor in the test position, that would be a positive test. And when the positive test results from a change in the strength of the pulse, that's more indicative of costoclavicular syndrome. This is really just sort of a subtype of thoracic outlet syndrome where the compression is specifically occurring at the space between the clavicle and the first rib. Remember that many structures that go into the upper extremity, vessels and portions of the brachial plexus, they go underneath the clavicle and above the first rib through that space. And if that space is narrow, Narrowed, there's increased compression on those structures. Okay? So costoclavicular syndrome is really just a subtype of thoracic outlet syndrome. Also, an increase in neurological symptoms into the ipsilateral upper extremity, in other words, the test side arm. Again, this would be more indicative of thoracic outlet syndrome, but it doesn't necessarily specify where the compression is occurring. Is it at the costoclavicular space? or is it at the pectoralis minor space? It really doesn't specify there. Also note that the costoclavicular test is really good in the assessment of thoracic outlet syndrome in patients who complain of symptoms while wearing a backpack or a heavy coat. And this is presumably because the backpack straps put pressure, that is inferior pressure, down on the clavicle, which further narrows that space and pushes the clavicle closer to the first rib. Let's take one more look at the costoclavicular test. Again, it's done in standing, and the PT is going to monitor the patient's radial pulse, that is its strength, throughout the duration of the test. Help to pull the scapulas down into depression and retraction, move the shoulder into extension with the elbow straight, and then the patient's going to drive their chest forward. And you can hold this position for up to 30 seconds. And again, you're monitoring for a decrease in the strength of the radial pulse, and increase in neurological symptoms into the test side upper extremity. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.